Americans seeking cheaper everyday essentials threaten corporate growth. This is Bloomberg. Now think about that. Don't they have it backwards? Americans seeking cheaper everyday essentials threaten corporate growth. Isn't the problem that Americans are seeking cheaper everyday essentials? So they say Americans are cutting back on personal hygiene products and a troubling sign for the U.S. economy and consumer-focused companies. Now, it's an amazing thing. You've got Joe Biden talking about Bidenomics. And he goes to a red state to talk about it. He can't go to any blue states because all the blue states are in the crapper. Literally, crap all over the place. And so this story comes out and they say, a a troubling sign for the U.S. economy. How about a troubling sign for Joe Biden and his ideology and his approach to economics and his reelection bid? It's not like the economy is doing this on its own. I've told you many times before, if you kill the golden goose, you don't get golden eggs anymore. It's the way it works. Despite surging inflation, shoppers kept spending thanks to income gains and government stimulus. But those benefits are waning. You see, ladies and gentlemen, government spending is like a heroin addict. And the dealer is Joe Biden and the Fed. And it's been for years and years and years. The fact of the matter is, You don't build a real economy with sustained growth by profligate spending. It doesn't happen. What you do is you destroy an economy that is trying to grow, and that's exactly what they did after the pandemic. So they write, despite surging inflation, shoppers kept spending thanks to income gains and government stimulus. So for the Democrats, this means more government stimulus. That is, more inflation. And they're going to drive us right into depression. Now, those benefits are waning. Now, now Americans are skimping. Even on everyday items such as toilet paper and toothpaste. I never in my life thought that those words would come out of my mouth. Never imagined it. That Americans have to skimp on toilet paper and toothpaste? Both ends of the body? These are essentials. These are essentials. Why aren't the Republicans hitting this hard enough, Mr. Producer? Many times I go into Walmart. I'll go into Costco, CVS, Walgreens, and so forth. I'm checking out the prices. I want to know what's going on. Get stuff for the family and so forth and so on. And I see what's going on. And there's also shortages. Are there any politicians who do this? When's the last time Joe Biden shuffled into a Walmart? Now they'll laugh like this clown Capehart and the others about Karen. It's just another way to trash middle America. Like Obama did. It's just another way to trash middle America. Extremist MAGA, another way to trash middle America. White supremacists, middle America. They come up with different phrases, one more outrageous and vile than the next. But people in this country are now cutting back on toothpaste and toilet paper, (coughs) excuse me, and other hygiene products. Next thing you know, the whole country will smell like a uh, Democrat party convention more insights on the economic environment come on wednesday with the release of june's consumer price index they can release all the indexes they want all the unemployment statistics they want all the rest of it i know what i see and i see a lot of people in pain i see a lot of people you know i'll tell you what you've got like Let's just take paper towels. You have bounty. Bounty is paper towels. Four equals 12. I don't even know what they're talking about. 12 equals 30. Or now you have toilet paper. 
it's like, uh, you want the really, really thick, big rolls? I told you I've been at Walmart and all these. Or what do you want? And now you can get a whole package of 120. 20 equals 120. I am watching people, and I don't blame them. Go up to the little signs that they have under each different type to see how much they're paying per sheet of toilet paper per sheet of paper towels, Mr. Producer. 3.1 cents versus 3.7 cents, which pays more, which pays And then you got to decide if you really want to do 120 toilet paper rolls, if you can afford it, regardless of how much it is per sheet. People are sitting there, standing there, trying to figure it out. Or toothpaste. You know, two for the price of this, a package of four for the price of that. I watch them as they struggle over this. I look at the deodorant. The price of deodorant is through the roof. It's through the roof. Basic stuff, but the manufacturers have to find the material that goes into these products. They have to assemble it. All these extra costs on top, these, these uh, disruptions in the supply chain for the little things. Agriculture goes through the same thing. People who raise beef, fowl, fisheries are all going through the same thing. This is a crappy economy. It doesn't mean that you can't acquire things. It just means that they're much more expensive. Then you drive by a McDonald's right here, right near me, and they have a sign up that says minimum wage up to $13 an hour. That's a pretty damn good minimum wage. The problem is you can't stay ahead at $13 an hour. Well, how much are you going to charge for a hamburger and fries or chicken nuggets? Or a soda to get it higher. Speaking of which, have you been to a drive through lately, Mr. Producer? You're going to feed four people. Four people, not kids, four, four adults. Let's put it that way. Get a couple of hamburgers, a side of fries, and a soda. It's 10 bucks. You're going to go through that drive through and you're going to pay $40 for fast food. I don't blame the fast food companies. They're under enormous pressure. And then the diner I go to, one of the ladies who waits there, and she's, uh, th- these are terrific people, but they're in their 50s and 60s. She's always, and they are, very happy, very pleasant. How's your day? What you're working on? How's your book coming? Just very, very nice. And I always say, well, how's your day? Normally, they don't. she said to me today, price of a gallon of gasoline on my corner just went up 20 cents a gallon. Now, this affects her. She's a waitress. She's a waitress. She lives mostly on tips. There weren't a whole lot of people in this morning, actually. So she didn't make a ton of money this morning. This is what people who get guaranteed income, guaranteed salary, guaranteed health care, guaranteed pension, striking for a little bit more, or in the federal government... If you close the federal government for a couple of weeks, they act like you're, you're choking off their subsistence. But the average person who's not on the government dole, whether through welfare or employment, or isn't represented by a trade union, which is the vast majority of the people, they're suffering. 
middle and low middle class people are suffering. And the people in Washington and the media don't care. The people in Washington and the bureaucracy don't care. Joe Biden doesn't care. He's touting his economy. The Democrat Party doesn't care. They'll just create a couple more programs and they'll blame Republicans for blocking them. They don't care. The strains that the consumer is under have been exacerbated over the last couple of months, said Morningstar analyst Aaron Lash. The reduction of food assistance program, listen to this, lower tax returns and using up extra savings and stimulus funds have an impact, she said. So in other words, for Bloomberg and for Morningstar, the problem is we're not spending enough money. The problem is we're not jacking up the economy on heroin enough. Now, as my friend Craig Shirley wrote yesterday, comparing the Reagan and the Biden economies, Reaganomics versus Bidenomics, Reaganomics, which relied almost 100% on the private sector and the market capitalist system, versus Bidenomics, which trashes the market system and the capitalist system and relies almost 100% on redistributing wealth and socialist economic principles, there's no comparison. No comparison. When Reagan came into office, people were scrimping under the Carter economy, much like the Biden economy. Same principles. But when Reagan came in, he blew the lid off the whole thing. Massive government, uh, economic expansion. The economic expansion, in fact, was so massive, 25% of the nation's Economy it grew by 25% by the time Reagan left office. The whole enchilada grew by 25%. So massive was the Reagan economic growth plan that even after George H. Bush's fairly poor presidency, Bill Clinton was still benefiting from the policies that were put in place to, during the Reagan administration. And the media were focused on homelessness. This guy Mitch Snyder in Washington, D.C. They would have every night on network TV. They'd go to a homeless shelter. They'd go to a food line. They wanted you to believe that Reagan had created all this poverty, destroyed all this wealth, didn't care about little kids, didn't care about older people, didn't care. People were in bread lines like the Depression. It was a lie. Meanwhile... I just read to you what Bloomberg, which is a liberal news site, said. And there's no cameras at Walmart. There's no cameras at Costco. There's no cameras at CVS and Walgreens. There's no cameras at the gas stations. There's no interviews. of average American families having to struggle. Nothing. There's no discussion about it whatsoever on these main media platforms. Nothing. And I want to salute the United Auto Workers. That's right. I want to salute the UAW. Joe Biden doesn't represent your interests. In fact, Joe Biden doesn't represent the interests of any private sector unions. Public sector unions, minus the cops and the firefighters, sure, that's the teachers. He has no respect. And for the AFL-CIO, the mothership, to go out there and endorse Biden is sickening to me. He's destroying the auto manufacturing industry. He's destroying the steel industry. He's destroying the coal industry. He's destroying all of our hard industries where men and women get dirt under their fingernails, of which they know not a damn thing in Washington, D.C.,